Uh, so, Bob, what was your first guitar, and uh, what's your current axe? My first guitar was a $30 department store special. The strings were up so high above the fretboard, I guess it was about a half inch or three quarters of an inch above it. But that's what I learned how to play guitar. I now have a uh, Guild F45 CE. It's a cutaway. It's a very pretty guitar. It's got a very nice acoustic sound. It's the same guitar that Pat Metheny uses in his playing. Uh, of course, I don't play the guitar as well as he does. But this guitar is really sort of special because it's got a maple back, it's got a violin back, and it's got an oval hole which sort of allows a lot of the mid-range and bass sounds to come out of the body of the guitar that other guitars don't have. I also installed on it uh, one of those LR bags combination sound systems which has a mic and a pickup as well. And that makes the guitar sound just as pretty amplified as it does without the amplifier itself. I also have a tenor banjo which I plunk around with and a Martin Backpacker guitar which I take along on campouts. Uh, it's funny that the instrument sometimes guides you into uh, writing songs of a certain type. Uh, for instance, um, I wrote my song uh, Mama's Arms on my backpacker guitar out on a camping trip. Uh, it had this plunky feel to it and and, and 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 it made the song more plunky and and I, and I always imagined the banjo fitting in right alongside of that uh, with more of that folk feel to it you're making an appearance on my show as a direct use of the home studio can you talk a little bit about your setup and the digital revolution my home studio is relatively simple nowadays. I, I still believe that you should really record your music in a professional studio with professional musicians there, with a professional recording engineer, with a producer. Uh, I think the quality of, of the material is, is really top-notch when you do that. But for my home studio, I just have audacity for some software to record some simple things. I have a uh, nice sure mic. Uh, Beta 87C or whatever the heck it's called. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Got a very nice wide bandwidth, so vocals come out really sweet on that. And of course, I feed that in through a Mackie mixer, an A-channel one, and I feed that into my Macintosh computer, and, 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 and basically that's my setup right now. Uh, I'm still considering putting on doors and trying to uh, isolate my studio away from the rest of the house a little bit, and I'll, I'll see how that goes, but that's my next project. All told, uh, a studio doesn't really have to cost that much, especially for demos in the home. My setup hardly costs anything. I mean, Audacity is free. Uh, the computer itself, I think, you know, you're going you're gonna to spend anywhere from $500 to a, you know, $1,500 for a good computer. There's a lot of benefits today that we have with this digital revolution. Uh, we don't need reel-to-reel -reel recording being done anymore. I mean, each of those tapes, I still have some of the tapes. Uh, they, nowadays you don't have to spend that much. Uh, computer hard drives are cheap. You can record on them and erase and edit and er, do everything that, that you really want to do uh, in, in, in a home studio. So don't spend a lot of money for, for demos that you're recording at home. Unless you really want to. I mean, if you want to, I mean, you can go out there and spend $25,000 for a system. Uh, and, and, and if that's what you want to invest in, uh, by all means go ahead. But uh, that's not the route that I chose. Now, Bob is very well known for his collaborative efforts. Uh, I personally know of his work with Freddie Potts, Morris P. Rainville, Chairs, and uh, Tuwald himself, uh, Clay Pierce. And is there any truth to the, uh, the rumor that there is a spud track in the can? I have been extremely lucky in doing some collaborative work, primarily through contacts on the internet. My first song, uh, Mama's Arms, was recorded by Tor Haugen and the Chairs, and then very shortly afterwards by uh, Morris P. Rainville from Canada. And both versions, uh, I was flabbergasted. Uh, I'm amazed at, at the quality of, of those two artists and how much of their soul they had put into my song. I was amazed by that. There were many other collaborative efforts that happened afterwards. One that comes to mind is uh, working with Freddie Potts out of Louisiana. Freddie uh, had this idea for a song called Moonshine. I sort of helped him out with the words and stuff. Then um, Clay Pierce had some marvelous ideas about a real touching song about his son. That touched me, but sometimes I'll help out and just see where that song goes. 
uh, the song is what matters to me and of course the people that help put the thing together when they spend that much time and energy on a project that's that's a very special and rare thing that happens one song in particular that has really benefited by the collaborative effort is uh, after she is gone uh, Mary's song it's a song about a bag lady and uh, I sent it out to Morris Rainville a little over a year ago I guess and he recorded it and it came back and we worked back and forth on, on, on getting the sound just right and we posted it on uh, on SoundClick uh, since then we've accumulated or like something like 32,000 plays for just that one song like almost a thousand downloads of the of the of the tune and and I think that kind of success sort of shows from a, a teaming up uh, of where t you know two minds are better than one definitely I hope to uh, continue doing this there are a number of people that I would love to be able to uh, collaborate with Mississippi Spud is one of them uh, his telly, uh, I, I definitely want that in the song, and, and, and we, we've already discussed a couple of ideas on a song about a half a year ago, but I, I plan to get back into that and, and, and see if we can finish that one up. I think that one had a lot of potential. I wholeheartedly recommend uh, collaborative efforts to uh, many of the artists out there and songwriters out there. I've learned so much from the people that I've worked with, and I've, I've had such a blast doing it. Every single collaboration that I've ever done, I've really benefited by it. And I just want to say thanks to all the great people out there that took the time and their energy to work with me. What do you think about the wonderful wide web? Uh, the internet for the musician and the artist and the songwriter is a wonderful thing. It's a microphone that is set to talk to the whole world. I've been able to get folks to listen to my songs from Australia to Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, places that I would never be performing in directly. I can't say how wonderful of a medium it is. It sure beats radio as far as I'm concerned, and I think it's definitely the wave of the future. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time before the Internet, though, catches up on being able to protect the rights of songwriters and uh, artists and, and keeping their material from being stolen and just used all over the place. They'll, they'll figure that out soon enough and within the next couple of years I think even that will be much better. I have heard more songs that were unique and distinctly creative. Uh, something that hadn't been, how should I say, it, uh, homogenized or blenderized by the music industry. The artist and the songwriter are able to put out songs that comes straight out of their heads and go straight on, onto a recording, onto an MP3 recording, which 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 is presented directly to the audience. Uh, I don't think you can ask for anything better than that. The other benefit about the internet is that artists can talk to other artists and see what problems they have found from the experiences that they have had. And songwriters can learn how to write better from other songwriters. It's one great mosh pit for folks that have the same interests and, 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 and maybe you have the same problems and issues and they're able to work on them and try to solve them in, in, a, in a grander effort, uh, which is more cooperative across nations, across cultures, across all sorts of things. What are the important things in life besides music? Outside of my um, musical interests, I guess the focus is really my family. My wife, my kids, my new grandchild, who was born uh, just two minutes before midnight, before New Year's Day. My, my son, uh, he's getting married in, uh, in June. Life is just so full of everyday things that I really have very little time left over between my day job my family and my music and I, and I think I've got a full platter right there. For rest and relaxation uh, I like to go out to my camp but uh, that I really enjoy more in uh, spring, summer and fall. In the winter time I prefer sitting over by a nice hot fire and playing my guitar and maybe watching a movie or two. Who are your musical heroes, particularly those artists who influenced your own songwriting? There's a lot of people that I was influenced by in music. One is like Conway Twitty, who sang That's My Job. 
I learned a lot about what people can say inside of a song and how meaningful it can be to the listener. I know that was meaningful to me, particularly uh, because my dad had recently passed away. There were many other people that had influenced what I have been doing in the past, like, 10 years or so. Kenny Rogers, Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson, Clint Black. The list goes on and on and I, I think I wrote it down one time and I, and, I, and I think I surpassed about two or three hundred names of people that, that, that had really influenced me in, 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 in what I do. There was somebody that made a statement one time uh, and had a quote that says something that we are we can see so far because we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I think that's been my guiding principle when it comes to creating new music. And, and what, I, what I've done is I've tried to learn from people that have come before me. Uh, and, not, and not only the, uh, the, the big name artists, uh, I learned a lot from the indies that are on the internet. and. I think someday they're going to have big names and be very influential on the music scene itself. I'm grateful for being at the right place at the right time in gaining from the experiences of the people from the past and learning from the people that are there right now. And I hope to uh, leave a little bit of something that somebody else can build on something in the future with. Bob, do you have a live performance story you can tell us? Uh, everybody who's performed on stage has had great experiences and has had horror stories. The one story that I can think of where I had a blast, I was performing at this open mic night in a place north of Rome, New York. The, the place had, had this heavy rock blues influence. Uh, most of the people there were, were heavy rockers. When I came on stage, I was doing my country music and I'm, and I'm trying to think real quick about what's, which song I should really play for this crowd that is expecting this overdriven music to be played. And, and, and what I did is I quickly picked out my slowest, uh, sweetest song, uh, and, and I performed that. The first four, well, maybe eight, twelve bars into the song, I looked at this one guy, I guess he was about six foot four, about 250 pounds. He was turning away from me and and starting to face the bar when I was singing. Then I no noticed that his, his wife or his girlfriend or whoever, she uh, sort of peeked out around him and started heading towards me. And then I noticed another lady and, an, and, and another one. Uh, finally, there were about five or six women that just started approaching me while I was performing the song. And I was flattered to no end. Their mouths were wide open and they were just staring and and swaying to the song that I was singing. I couldn't have asked for a better audience. After the show, uh, the owner of the bar came by and, and, and he asked me to come by and play any time that I ever wanted to. And I was really flattered by that. That's the story that really exemplifies something that was a sweet thing. Do you consider yourself a country songwriter? I do consider myself a country artist, uh, particularly given the breadth of genres that are available to people within country right now. Uh, everything from bluegrass to uh, alternative country to country pop to country rock to traditional country. I mean, there's all sorts of flavors out there. I uh, try to dabble in other areas as well, folk and rock, in writing my material. That's that's for darn sure. My, my song, uh, after she is gone has some urban flavors to it uh, which don't necessarily come out of a rural environment i think that being able to explore other music types and other music cultures is an important thing i grew up on brazilian music and some german music and some polish music all of that is the background where you come from and what you can apply yourself to if you want. What makes for a good song to you as a listener? As a listener, um, I listen to the intro very carefully and the first words. If they grab my ears right from the start, then I think I'm on to a great song. If the next set of words connects 
back to the first words, uh, then I know I'm onto a great song. And I have to see that connectivity that goes all the way down to the hook of the song and make sure that everything focuses on that hook and every word has to count. The thing I guess I look for is, is humor. Uh, I want to see a little variety. I mean, sad songs are good in country music, but there's a lot more to be gained in listening to tunes that come from in all sorts of tangents with all sorts of flavors. Every, you know, there's love songs are, are, are fine, but um, I think comedy and open spaces in, in a song are really important. Those open spaces can uh, create openings for soloists. What I really want to say is that songs that have a message are important because what they do is they sort of indicate our humanity in our everyday lives. The songs should reflect a depth of our understanding of our surrounding culture. I try to do that in a couple of songs uh, like Let Them Know What's In Your Eyes or um, After She Is Gone or Mama's Arms. I try to give a glimpse of what's important in our everyday lives within the framework of a song. What's your understanding of the um, paid download? Uh, the paid download thing on the internet, well, that's where artists and songwriters get reimbursed directly through a, a payment from the end user. Right now, I think that there's not a whole heck of a lot of money to be made for indies. And even the established recording industry, I don't think we'll make a whole lot of money on it right now. But I think within five years to ten years, I think music on the internet will be the radio of yesterday. It's only a matter of time before things really catch up and go, go in that direction. I think I see the processes all lined up, centered about th those types of concepts. Well, it's uh, unfortunately come to that time where we have to uh, wrap her up. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, you, Bob, for uh, swinging by. You've given us some really insights into what you're about. I've been asking all the questions here and uh, you've been doing a, a lot of the talking. Uh, Perhaps you'd like to throw out a question to uh, Len Amsterdam. Uh, Len, at this time, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> in doing this interview, I realized the time and the trouble that you have taken. Um, I've been itching to ask this for a long time, uh, but are you a DJ in, in Toronto or, or Ottawa or wh where, where are you? Uh, I know you're on the internet, but uh, why aren't you also on the radio right now? Jeez, Bob, that, that hurt. Uh, have you heard the, uh, the state of conventional radio? Seriously, uh, conventional radio is dead. Uh, even this new uh, spaced out thing, it's, it's the same old, same old uh, repackaging of all the hits you've heard all your life. Now, the Canadian nation has been uh, hip to all things Len Amsterdam for many moons now, and it's only recently that my American brothers and sisters have joined the cause. Bob Grez is on the top of my playlist and should be on yours too. Len Amsterdam, Canada.